Okay, today we're going to have a look at a uh, technique called rapid hill slope surveying, which is a very quick and simple way of getting a, an overview of the uh, morphology of the ground surface. It's not particularly accurate, uh, so it's not as accurate as normal surveying or using a level or theodolite, uh, but it does have its benefits. It's quick, it's easy, uh, it requires relatively minimal amounts of equipment. And it also gives you a quick snapshot, a quick overview of the terrain you're working in, which can help you interpret uh, the sort of terrain you're in, what its genesis is, what its uh, history of formation is. And the only bits of equipment you need are a clinometer, uh, such as this. This is a fairly uh, expensive model, but they come in all different shapes and sizes. All we're actually doing is measuring simple angles with this. Uh, we look through it and inside the clinometer, which I can't show you obviously, there is a scale and as I tilt the scale it gives me the angle at which the clinometer is pointing uh, and I can read that off fairly easily. Now to do this rapid hill slope technique we use two ranging poles and you need two people to do it. So do it quickly and easily, you can do it on your own. Uh, what we do is have a ranging pole at the base of the slope put our clinometer on a known point on that ranging pole and then somebody else stands with the ranging pole up slope at the first break of slope and we sight the clinometer at the same point on the ranging pole up slope that we're holding it on the ranging pole down slope. We read off the angle and that gives us a slope gradient over that distance. Now of course distance we also need to measure that. We would normally measure that with a 30 meter 50 meter tape Unfortunately, ours broke a few days ago, so uh, we don't have a spare. Um, so we won't show you the tape measure, but it's fairly obvious you just lay a tape measure between the two ranging poles to get the distance. Once you've got that uh, slope unit measured, we would then move the ranging pole at the bottom of the slope up to and beyond the ranging pole that's at the first break of slope, and we would put that ranging pole on the second break of slope. Take the reading again through the kilometer and so on and we just keep going across our slope up slope down slope uh, until we've got a decent overview of the land surface that we're interested in and we'll show you this in action uh, in a few minutes on the video now in terms of ranging poles most ranging poles are two meters long uh, which is <coughs> okay it's what we need but of course these things not very easy to transport so where we are in Switzerland at the moment, we're in the forefield of the Fay Gletscher in Sass Fay. We're doing a lot of surveying at higher altitude. We can't take these things onto cable cars, for example. Difficult to carry in your rucksack as well. So if you have the chance to get ranging poles that break down like these ones do, it makes it so much easier. You can just break them down into metre lengths. You can either carry them by hand, you can certainly fit them in a cable car. And, as we've got here, they fit nicely onto the side of your rucksack. So we're now at the first point uh, of this uh, hummocky moraine that we're going to measure. And we're taking the first sight. And if I just walk round a bit, you can see that someone has located the ranging pole at the first obvious break of slope. And to help Rachel sight it, she's put a finger just below the relevant mark on the ranging pole, which is the same mark on the lower ranging pole where Rachel is holding the clinometer. So once we've taken this measurement and we've noted it in the field book, Rachel's then going to walk up with her ranging pole to the next obvious break of slope and we'll re repeat the process there. So we're now moving up slope, heading to the next break of slope, just a little bit further up. And then we're going to repeat the process looking up from the lower ranging pole to the upper ranging pole. Now if you want to take two measurements you can do this, you can look down from the upper pole to the lower one and take the average of both sightings. Uh, that may give you a little bit more accuracy, but generally it's, it's not really required. 
um, because this is a, a relatively inaccurate method but we just want to get a quick simple overview of the uh, land surface we're working on. So we're now taking the second reading up to the next obvious break of slope. Okay so we're just taking a sight here and I want to point out one feature of this clinometer there is actually a vial uh, with a needle you may just be able to see that on the side uh, because what we can do uh, is place the clinometer on a rock surface or some other uh, object we might wish to know the angle of and just read the angle uh, straight off this side window which can be very useful uh, for many applications in uh, geomorphology, physical geography, uh, environmental science.